Hello, welcome to evening prayer. It is uh, just the 14th of June. It is a nice fine day and uh, we're building up towards what looks like being the climax uh, on Friday. I mean, it still looks as though it's going to be very, very hot. So that might be worth bearing in mind, trying to find ways of making sure that we're cool on Friday. At the moment, it's very pleasant, though, and we give grateful thanks to God for all the variations in weather in this country, which bring blessings and benefits in different ways. And right now we do pray for an abundant harvest, uh, given that the harvest is going to be a quite a difficult thing in some parts of the world. And of course, we know about the supply issues from uh, the Ukraine and Russia, uh, thanks to the war there. We remember today Richard Baxter, who was a significant leader of the Puritan movement in the 17th century, uh, where things Christian-wise were rather different from what they are now. And we do pray that everything about him that was good, that is an example for us to follow, uh, will be brought to our attention one way or the other. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 9, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will make music to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back, they stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on your throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy was utterly laid waste. You uprooted their cities. Their very memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has made fast his throne for judgment. For he shall rule the people with rule the world with righteousness and govern the peoples with equity. Then will the Lord be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood has remembered them. He did not forget the cry of the oppressed. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider the trouble I suffer from those who hate me. You that lift me up from the gates of death that I may tell all your praises in the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your salvation. The nations shall sink into a pit of their own making, and in the snare which they, have, they, which they set will their own foot be taken. The Lord makes himself known by his acts of justice. The wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. They shall return to the land of darkness, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, and let not mortals have the upper hand. Let the nations be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but mortal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. If you want to follow the Old Testament reading. It's 2 Chronicles chapter 28, which um, is essentially an account of the tragic reign of King Ahaz, and a fine example of how not to follow the Lord. Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. But the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, 
Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead. But he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. And to be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I bind into myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. And my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. So, Lord Jesus, tonight we pray uh, for all those who are struggling with famine or disaster, uh, remembering that there are always these situations that go on throughout the world. And we pray, Lord Jesus, for the relief and development organizations that are seeking to battle away with problems that sometimes reoccur from time to time in areas of the world where they are struggling with climate change or just struggling to feed themselves. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. You greatly bless relief and development organisations, especially uh, as public donations may well be not what they were, because of issues such as the Ukraine war and the rising cost of living. We particularly bring before you, Lord, those Christian organizations that are reliant upon the giving of the church. And we pray that they will be fully provided for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before the Lord the relationships between Russia, China, and the United States and the complexities there. The relationship between 
truth and fiction. We pray, Lord Jesus, because you are a love of truth, the truth about the United States, Russia and China will out and all that they do. We pray, Lord Jesus, that there'll be a loosening of the oppression that is preventing debate, that is making uh, moderate people uh, look in some sense wrong and extreme people to be in some, some sense right. We bring before you the current elections in France and what that will mean for the government of the nation. We bring before the Lord the challenge of sorting out what's happening uh, in the relationship between uh, Northern Ireland and the European Union and Great Britain. And we pray that the Lord will speak into that and bring a resolution to that conflict. Remember before the Lord the ongoing concerns about the relationship with the European Union, which we pray will be uh, re-established on a harmonious basis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring before the Lord those nations that are afraid of what Russia might do next, those applying to NATO and the European Union. And we pray that uh, Russia will know the way forward for their own nation, for uh, their own people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we bring before you our own borough of rage and we pray that you'll lead and guide the leaders there in the ways that they should go. We pray that you will particularly help them to remember the churches in their planning. Lord Jesus Christ, we are here to pray for the whole community and to be a blessing and benefit to the whole community. And we pray that you'll grant us grace to do that effectively. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, I'll be back with you again tomorrow evening and Lord bless you and grant you grace to have an enjoyable evening and a good night's sleep. Bye for now.